You know, I'm very lucky because this job is all about imagination. And if you can imagine something, if you can imagine what it would be like to be a mother sending her child off to war, then you develop empathy. And acting is all about listening and being open. And if you have empathy, then you, it's almost enforced compassion. So it's more of a mystery to me how people who are in this business aren't somehow active as citizens of the world, as citizens of their country, because you're identifying with people all the time in other places and with what's going on with them. And I don't really differentiate between what I do for a living and my life. I hope, I think that being a mother is one of the has been one of the most demanding jobs in terms of um, stamina and imagination <laughs> and creativity. And I think that uh, my job also helps me listen really well to people and have an open heart. And so all of those things, there's a fluidity between life and I hate to use the word art, but whatever my job it is. And then, you know, the natural flow of that is to ask questions. And unfortunately, sometimes in the United States, asking questions tends to isolate you, t tends to take you away from the tribe and um, be labeled political. And um, as you know, this is a particularly surreal time in the United States in terms of what's going on politically. And um, the, I don't know where the journalists have come to because we really don't have very many responsible journalists and television has become so important. And uh, so people aren't getting information to make educated decisions. So if you're someone who's connected to the media in a job like mine, you have the, I think, responsibility and the availability of being kind of a little flashlight to uh, help people get information that they're not getting. And um, that's often called political, but you know, I think every film uh, either challenges uh, the status quo or reinforces it. And so when you're making films, you're either enforcing sexism, racism, ageism, or you're challenging it. But all films are political films. It's just you only notice the ones that challenge it. So there's kind of this odd dance that goes on, uh, I think. Okay, you, you talk about questions and what we will be the question, if there's one question you will ask for yourself as an artist to the inner if you, if you have to choose one question and see yourself in a mirror as an American artist right now, what would be the question? That's a really hard question. <laughs> no? Living America, no. I, I think that we're in a time of transition and we're trying to find out if you... America seems to be craving authenticity. It's, it's drawn on one side to this guy, Trump. <laughs> because people feel that he's definitely outside of system and outside of reality and outside of everything. And then there's Bernie Sanders, who I agree with um, who also came up without taking money from anyone, without being associated with any of the organizations that are ruining the environment and that are, you know, fracking Monsanto, all of that. And, um, 
And so people gravitate towards him because they sense that he, he's a chance to be authentic and to change the status quo into something different. And so, but the problem is that the press, um, you know, was really drawn to the clown and not information. And so they not covered Bernie Sanders very well. Uh, up until he demanded it recently, or until the people demanded it. But to get back to your question, I think that what people, what's happening now is there's a question of authenticity as opposed to um, the idea of ourselves that has been developed through reality TV almost. You know, kind of a, um, what's happened also online with so many friends and liking or swiping or, you know, everything that's happened that has uh, given us a false sense of connection and really what we, what everybody craves is connection. And uh, so I think people are starting to want to actually connect, not just give the idea of connecting, you know, and that's, that's being shown politically. So I, I don't know what question I ask myself. Um, well, I mean, where am I? I would ask myself. So, you have been at an anti-war you advocate against the penalty recently and towards the Bernie Sanders campaign, like a presidential campaign. Don't you think that those positions and so many others stand for, sometimes controversial, would affect your career as an actress or do you, you think that's completely... No, I, I, but I think that's a little bit like worrying if your slip is showing when you're cleaning a burning building. I don't think you think about those things, you know, you can't start to think about those things because then you're not free to, to be true to yourself. And how movie industry and Hollywood in particular can help stimulate political change or strengthen social issues. For instance, knowing the huge challenge the world is uh, uh, preserving, uh, trying to preserve our planet, should Hollywood be more active or play a bigger political role in climate change? For instance, to this try to, to, to understand what really is happening right now and what we're facing for the next 50 years. What's the role of Hollywood? Well, the good news and the bad news is that Hollywood is not political. It never has been political. There are some people in Hollywood who make Christmas documentaries. There's an amazing amount of documentaries. And people are more interested now in documentaries and they're becoming better than some when you see the act of killing, for instance, that's an extraordinary film that doesn't even seem like a documentary. Um, so I think that a lot of change can happen through giving information in documentaries. And I think sometimes Dead Man Walking started a, a real conversation, a dialogue about the death penalty and the specifics of the death penalty. And I think sometimes you can do that, but I think that The Nutty Professor is a very political film because it makes you want her to be with that fat guy. And it makes you put your, yourself in the part of that guy that you've never identified with. So I think in terms of climate change, sometimes, you know, it's very difficult to make a film that's about a problem that's uh, environmental, whatever, the death penalty, whatever, and make it a compelling movie. Dead Man Walking was really a love story and a story of redemption and with the background of the death penalty. And that's what I think pulled you into that. But so it's much harder to write a script and to make a movie that's a good movie and entertaining when it's an issue film. Um, but I think that also a lot of people, I mean Leonardo, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio just spoke about uh, you know, choosing a candidate that didn't support fracking when he gave his speech, and I think a lot of these people can um, bring attention to issues 
Um, and, I, and I think that's great because usually the people that don't have a voice need a voice. And, uh, you know, the, the, the refugees that are pouring in all over the place in, in Europe, they have no voice. And so anytime you can tell their stories, and that's what we do is tell stories, um, and show their faces, you take uh, people and you, you, when you reduce people to a concept and take away their humanity whenever there's an issue involved, um, you're, that's, a, that's a form of violence. So, you're, you know, whatever you can tell a story that, that makes people human again, that's really important. How do you do that and give you... But I think really the, the most wonderful stories are ones which are love stories. Every movie I've ever done has been a love story. And, and, uh, and ones that encourage people to be the protagonist in their own lives. And if they're the protagonist in their own life, then that will mean that they'll notice the environment when it's being raped, and they'll speak up and they'll ask questions and they'll get involved. Okay. I have two. These are two particular questions. I work with words and journalists and I have two this question. Do you think a picture is worth than a thousand words? I mean, in an historical perspective, do you think movies have more information than books? But how do you see this relation between the influence of books and movies nowadays? Unfortunately, I think pictures are more powerful. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I love reading, my kids are avid readers, but I think that our attention span is getting smaller and smaller, and people are not reading as much as they used to. Um, I like the feel of books. I brought Love and Time of Cholera with me to read it again while I was here. Um, um, you know, and I think that it's very hard, it's very difficult to take a really good book and make it into a good movie. Um, because your mind does so many wonderful things when you read. Um, but I do think that in terms of how we are um, digesting information now, that pictures really make a difference. The one picture of the little boy that drowned in Greece just activated so many people, and no matter how many articles have been on Twitter and it's, you know, wherever, that picture alone really affected people in a way that all the information hadn't. And I think that uh, images, sometimes I can't even remember the plot of a movie, but I remember certain uh, gestures and touches and, and the way something almost smelled when I, when I see it, and I think that it's just such a direct uh, communication to your heart when you, when you see an amazing, you know, emotional image. Uh, I, I think that's probably why dance works and music works so much easier than theater sometimes because you don't have the language when you're going from culture to culture. You can be moved by, by music uh, because there's something direct that the way that images are. And you see that mother or that child or that father and you can immediately identify in a way that you can't with uh, stories, but stories are important, for sure. Yeah, As you know, children in Colombia have been in a war for more than 50 years and we are hopefully very close to sign a peace agreement with the FARC. And um, you as an um, anti-war activist, what would you say to those Colombians that are afraid of the future, afraid of having this rebel group in the political arena after doing so much harm to Colombian society? What's through your experience as an anti-war activist, what would be your message to these this uh, reflection of thoughts about the fear in this transition process. Wow. 
Um, and she translated, wow. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> now I'm speaking Spanish. <laughs> um, I don't know, it's about trust, isn't it? Trust, giving some kind of trust so the future can have a be different. It's a hard, hard thing. And it always involves some kind of compromise. But I think that um, violence just does not work. It just doesn't work as a solution. This is something that the um, United States has to, has to learn to think outside of that box. It's the most primitive way of solving a problem, but um, at the end of the day, it's, it doesn't work. So, I mean, it's, it's asking everyone to take a, a, a leap of faith, a Kierkegaard guardian, huge leap of faith. Um, I hope that it works out for you, because I'm sure you must be tired, so tired of, of that drain, and there's so much joy that you're missing when you're involved and your energy is going to these things. There's so much that you can't fill and you can't enjoy and uh, there's so much work to be done. But, I mean, you're very close, huh? I think. Very, are you very close? No. She says no. Crazy. Well, obviously you're not ready to compromise as much. But, um, I don't know that, I mean, I'm certainly not an expert on your political whatever, but I hope for you that it does because it's some hard thing to do that way for so long. I actually had a friend who was murdered here who came to go to school, a Native American activist friend of mine many years ago, and she was an activist and she came to go to school and she was kidnapped and they tried to negotiate and explain who she was and they, she was murdered, so I, I know personally a little taste of the cost of, of this war. The great writer, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, the most universal Colombian of all times, his name again, I have to learn how to say it right. <laughs> Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Yes. <laughs> he created this magic, magical reality for you to Could you say that the world film is a kind of reality with a touch of magic? How do you see this uh, At its best. At its oh, best, gosh. I think so. I think that um, it encourages you to go into a dark space and dream and identify with what's going on. And it can be very magical when you can forget about everything and, and, and join in. And I think it's at its best. And I, I personally, uh, you know, for me, the films are best when they're surprising. And, when you're in a comedy and suddenly you're crying and when you, you know. But there, it's, there's so many ways for films to go wrong. It's very, you know, it hardly ever works out where they're really... I mean, there's a lot of amazing Mexican directors now that are doing this kind of film, you know. The, uh, this magic realism idea, it's pretty amazing. I mean, that's the advantage of film, isn't it? as opposed to theater. It's hard to pull it off in the theater, but it's easier to do it in film. I think this uh, new blood in Mexican or Latin American blood in Hollywood is enhancing you know, the, 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 the view of the directing movie. Well, they made money, so that's going to mean that they can make more films. <laughs> <laughs> that's why, not because they have any appreciation that they've managed to get a lot of awards and make a lot of money and so they'll be able they'll be given more money to make more films. So I uh, yeah, I think that that's hastening. But really um, there's so many inexpensive cameras now. I think that a lot of people, for better or worse, are making a lot of little films. The problem is that there's not distribution. And that's why festivals are so important. 
because a lot of films can be in festivals and then the crowd really likes them and then the studio goes, oh, well, maybe the best yeah. yeah. So, they're very important for finding new films. I mean, I just saw a Colombian entry for the Academy Awards, the, I don't know how you say the Spanish, but the Embrace of the Circuit. That was, wow. Yes. And I don't think that cost a fortune to make, you know. Um, so it's possible with all these new cameras and everything to make really amazing films within a, a, a reasonable budget. And I think it's giving people a lot of opportunity and that the festivals are encouraging um, the production of these kind of, of endeavors, which is really, really great because the small um, film houses that used to exist, for, for instance, in the United States that showed far, a lot of foreign films and then little tiny films don't exist anymore. There are very few of them. Uh, they're all these big, corporately owned, you know, small theaters within those mega things. And so you're not getting the choices they used to 25 years ago. So the festivals have filled in I think some of the gap for those little films and foreign films and experimental films, and that's so important. So congratulations. Yeah. You. What would be your message to the new generation of people who are not here, right? I guess are here in the home industry after I'm here because all my plans failed. <laughs> so I would say being adaptable and, and um, being courageous, especially if you're young. I mean, you should fail as big as you possibly can now. Uh, it's really important to fail, seriously. Um, and to the most successful thing you can do is find something that you really love to do. And forget about making a lot of money and just find the thing that that challenges you and frightens you and, and uh, because I mean that's a gift if you can figure that out. And you're if you're young you shouldn't be compromising yet. You have to save that for much later. <laughs> um, and just, you know, Fucking go for it. <laughs> my, my young filmmaker son is in the audience, Jack Kennedy. He's good at Love you. Thank you so much. An impact in your performance. Always. Do you think really what's the having such impact right now in so different issues and activism? You know, I um I never thought to be an actor. I never studied acting. I never I fell into it um, after about ten years. I figured this is must be what I do, um, and I think it really helped me that I wasn't so determined to be an actor. I really just saw it as a means to an end. But I came of age at a time when um, the issues were really clear. I mean, because you could see on television what was happening in the South and in Vietnam. And, you, you know, it wasn't like now where you, you're really, everything's filtered unless you're watching Al Jazeera or something. You're not getting what's really going on. And so, um, it, it was just part of being young, was being involved with what was going on, the Vietnam War and uh, the desegregation of the South and women's live. I don't think I wore a bra for 10 years. I mean, that was just part of what you were doing, right? Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, it was fabulous. Um, <laughs> So there wasn't a conscious decision, it was just who I was, it was who the times, what was going on in the times, and, you know, I, 
I just was was, was searching, and um, and it just continued, and then I fell into this funny career, and um, I mean, acting is not that big a deal, really. I mean, just every child does it. You know, it's just surviving. It's difficult. It's not really the acting. That's so when people talk about their craft, I always get a little bit uncomfortable, but. Um, I think that it's uh, it's trying to create your life, um, you know, how you spend your energy, how you spend your time, who you spend it with. Those are decisions that are as important. And um, I've been so lucky to be able to live so many different women's lives and learn so many different things. Uh, it's, it's, I have, I've just been so, so very lucky, really. So, thank you, thank you very much for sharing with us all your thoughts, all your, your point of view, and unfortunately time, time is out, and uh, I was afraid you were going to ask some math questions. No, 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 Thank you. Uh, I'll see you this morning.